Hey Looters, it's Flutes here. I want to talk about rogues and multi-classing so that we can get some good ideas and best practices to make interesting characters. Today on Flutes Loot. So first of all, I want to remind everyone to visit flutesloot.com and look at the link in the description for an article that goes along with this video. That article goes into a lot more detail than I will in this video because it's easier to just write it all out there than do a very long video. Flutesloot.com is managed and maintained by myself, Flutes, and my wife, Opal. We have a few guest writers that have been writing with us too, so check them out. Let's start with what you get if you just dip a few levels into Rogue when you're playing some other class. With a single level dip in Rogue, you get proficiency in light armor, a Rogue skill, and proficiency with thieves tools. And that's just from the multi-classing table of what different classes get you. The rogue class features give you 1d6 of sneak attack damage, thieves can't for talking in code, and expertise so that you can beef up two of your skills or your thieves tools to double your proficiency bonus. At level 2, rogues get cunning action, a very useful feature that gives your bonus action the ability to dash, disengage, or hide. The most common ones I use are disengage and dash, though hide can come in handy as well in a stealth heavy encounter. The one or two level dip into rogue can be great for classes that don't necessarily want to go all 20 levels in their core class, especially if they don't use their bonus action a lot already. Spellcasters make great multi-classes for rogues because they get light armor to just give themselves a little bit more survivability. But cunning action is the big one. If they get cornered by big brutes that are trying to smash the spellcasters, they can disengage as a bonus action, hop away, get in a better position, maybe put their frontliners between them and their enemies, and then cast a spell still with their action. It's always good to make your spellcasters mobilized so that they don't just end up in one spot getting smashed as soon as they get cornered. Opal, in particular, loves multi-classing rogue and fighter. One of our first articles of all time, maybe even our first, I don't remember, was about her saying how much she loves multi-classing rogue and fighter. It's a very fun combination, especially if you enjoy what a fighter can do, but you just want more options. Rogues gain a subclass at level 3, so if you want to go 3 levels, that's when we can really start having some fun seeing what kind of subclasses we want to combine with. While multiclassing with other classes, you'll have to consult the multiclassing stat table to see what stats you need in those classes. On that note, let's start talking about what are some fun rogue multiclass concepts that you might want to try. Not all of these concepts are based on optimizations. I think there's a lot of content on the internet for optimizing multiclassing as a rogue. I want to talk about some cool synergies, yes, some optimal multi-classes, but also just some that sound fun. So if you're someone who isn't as interested in the numbers and just wants to combine some cool abilities or themes, you will find some of my concepts to be tempting. I'll be going through these multi-class recommendations by subclass, starting with the Arcane Trickster, because it's first in alphabetical order. One combination for the Arcane Trickster is to go Arcana Cleric. If you've forgotten about the Arcana Cleric, it is a cool little subclass that lives in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, probably one of the only subclasses worth remembering from it. The Arcana Cleric can learn Wizard Cantrips at first level, which means you can learn some cantrips like Booming Blade or Green Flame Blade. As a rogue, you don't need to make multi-attack, you just want one attack that's going to hit. So using a cantrip that enhances that attack is even better. The narrative for this multi-class can be a rogue who actually worships a god of knowledge or magic. The arcane trickster learns some limited spells, but the cleric multi-class symbolizes its devotion to a deity. Additionally, the one level of arcana cleric will enable you to be proficient in medium armor and shields. You'll be able to defend yourself very well if you are attacking with one hand and have a shield in the other. Whether you're using a rapier, a short sword, or a light crossbow, having a shield can be very handy. Though with the ranged attack, you will want to take something like the crossbow expert feat so that you don't need to load it while one hand is occupied with your shield. My second arcane trickster multi-class recommendation is with my favorite wizard subclass, the enchanter. This is a high level concept. At level nine, arcane tricksters get magical ambush where if they're hidden from an enemy, the unaware enemies have disadvantage on saving throws against spells being cast by the arcane trickster. Enchanters of level 10 will be able to twin cast their enchantment spells. If you hide and you twin cast your enchantment spells, you could cast something very scary like, like dominate person or hold monster at two targets 
and they may have disadvantage on those saving throws, giving you essentially four chances to succeed with a single spell slot that can be very impactful, but if it fails, it wouldn't do anything. So it's very important to make sure that your enemies fail their saving throw. You will miss out on some higher level enchantment spells when you have this combination, but if you enjoy playing that rogue archetype so that you're not just focused on enchantment only and maybe you're doing other things, this can be a great high level synergy to get the most out of your spell slots. Arcane Trickster also pairs well with the Trickery Domain Cleric. I think it would be cool to invoke Duplicity with your Trickery Domain and then use your Mage Hand Ledger Domain as an Arcane Trickster to actually make it look like your duplicate, which is just an illusion, is real because it is interacting with things. So your Mage Hand, invisible as an Arcane Trickster, can make it look like your illusion self is interacting with things and picking them up and looking at them. It could also simulate like even just blowing air from your mouth by it just like wave, waving the hand so that it blows air out of the illusion's mouth. There's a lot you could do that could be really fun. Plus you get spells like Polymorph and Modify Memory if you go high enough in the Trickery Domain. Very good spells on that domain spell list. And after all, Arcane Trickster and Trickery Domain, they basically have the same name. So combining them, there's sure to be some fun to be had. Keep in mind that when you're multiclassing with a rogue, you need to have at least a dexterity of 13. Arcane Tricksters could also pair with the Pact of the Blade from multiclassing as a Warlock, and maybe you choose the Hexblade as a patron. This would allow the Arcane Trickster to actually focus on Charisma, to kind of be the face of the party and have expertise in some of those Charisma checks and have very high roles for them, and not really worry about Intelligence. A lot of the Arcane Trickster's spells don't have to focus on having high saving throws or spell attack modifiers. So if you invest in your Charisma, and don't really worry about your intelligence for your spell casting, you might be just fine. You'll be able to learn things like Booming Blade, Eldritch Blast, if you need to do ranged attacks and you usually are melee. But you could also go for Pact of the Chain or Pact of the Tome if you wanted to do more with your spell casting utility or your familiar. There's a lot you could do that would be fun as an Arcane Trickster to just take a few Warlock levels, in addition to expanding your spell options. The Arcane Trickster could also combine with three levels of a fighter and use a sneak attack attack to uh, do some damage and then use their action surge to do the ready action and say, when my familiar uses the help action, I will attack again with my reaction. And then that happens. So that's a great way to enable yourself to attack twice in a round and do sneak attack twice in a round. You can increase your critical range with a champion fighter or you can learn some battle maneuvers as a battle master fighter. It's basically any fighter you choose three levels of it will be fun for an arcane trickster. The next rogue subclass is the assassin. The assassin pairs very well with the gloom stalker if you want to do some more attacks and really capitalize on the ambushes you set up. Take three levels of gloom stalker and enhance your assassin's abilities. I do recommend you check out my uh, article and video that I revised the assassin to make it a more worthwhile subclass because the base player's handbook assassin has some issues that make it a little suboptimal. I recommend checking that out. Another video and article I have is combining the grave cleric with the assassin rogue. You can do a lot of damage once the assassin is level 17 and you just have two levels of grave cleric to channel divinity point at someone, give them pass to the grave vulnerability to damage, which essentially between that and death strike of the assassin and the auto crit of the assassin on an ambush you may be doing upwards of 500 plus damage the average is probably closer to two or three hundred damage but you can check out my video and my article about that multi-class build as well combining the assassin with the glamour bard will allow you to really lean into the imposter abilities and being able to infiltrate places manipulating people to get into the right position so that you can carry out your assassinations. I could picture this kind of character as a dancer or some sort of performer that entrances people and then is also very deadly with a hidden blade. There's a lot you could do with this sort of combination. And bards are great with skills and everything, just like the rogue is. And so uh, gaining jack of all trades and some bardic inspiration would really mix up what the assassin could accomplish. You can throw in some hexblade warlock to enhance your assassin's abilities and maybe focus more on charisma. After all, again, the assassin has some abilities that are based on infiltration so that you can deceive people and persuade them to get into the right places. The hexblade will allow you to use your charisma on attacks, as well as hold your own in a few combat scenarios that last past that initial ambush that you set up. Next up is the rogue subclass Inquisitive. I don't have anything that's like jumped out at me as an awesome idea, but there were some themes I picked up on that you might find intriguing. 
The Inquisitive Rogue, like the Arcane Trickster, could do well doing an Arcana Cleric dip to increase its defenses and gain Booming Blade. The medium armor and shields will be very useful as well. Another type of cleric that could go well with this is the War Cleric. You could be almost like military police. <laughs> you know, you're a War Cleric and you're inquisitive. You know, you're an investigator. So you might be investing more in your wisdom than the average rogue because of your desire to perceive and observe. You can also use heavy armor if you're not focused on being very stealthy, and you can use a shield. If you miss your attack to get sneak attack, you can use your war cleric's ability to make a bonus action attack to try again. An inquisitive rogue will invest more in wisdom, so you'll be able to do that bonus action attack more since it's limited by your wisdom modifier. And don't forget you'll be learning all the cleric first level spells with just one level dip, so you might be able to do things like bless to support your party. And of course, you don't have to use the heavy armor or the shield, you could have medium armor to make it so you don't need as much dexterity if you're not as focused on offense. And then you can still be more stealthy and you can use a longbow or other weapons. Next up is the Mastermind, and I really only thought of one multi-class that sounded fun to me, and that's to mostly be a Battle Master Fighter, level 12, let's say, and then Mastermind like level eight, so eight and 12. This is the battlefield commander archetype. As a Mastermind Rogue, you can use your bonus action to help action your allies but you can also make your attack have special abilities and debuffs to enemies. You can help maneuver your allies into good positions. It's just a great way to control the battlefield. I definitely picture you being mounted on a horse, surveying the battlefield and making sure everyone's in position while giving them coaching of where they should be focusing their attacks, who's weak, those sorts of things. Next up is the Phantom Rogue, which I thought would be a lot of fun to multi-class with a Totem Barbarian. The Totem Barbarian already makes these little totems and that's like its theme. And then the Phantom Rogue at le later levels is going to create little token totems out of souls, basically. So you'll probably take the Bear Totem and just resist a lot of damage. In addition, your Rogue at later levels will be able to learn, I think it's Evasion, I always confuse that with Uncanny Dodge, but the one where you can use a reaction to have the damage you take from an attack. This would mean that you're taking a fourth of damage after you resist it while raging. I picture taking 11 levels of Totem Barbarian and 9 of the Phantom Rogue. I know that's a lot because the Phantom Rogue doesn't do a lot until it gets that level 9 feature. So this might be one that you try in a one shot that's higher level, or in a campaign where you have a lot of patience and you don't mind being slow to level up in two almost even classes. And don't forget you can use a finesse weapon while using your strength on your attacks. So you could get rage damage as you sneak attack with a rapier. It's not a huge difference, but it is just a little damage boost that's nice to remember. And as long as you're attacking with your strength, you can use Reckless Attack, gaining advantage to secure Sneak Attack if you otherwise wouldn't be getting it. The next subclass is the Scout Rogue, which I think has a lot of synergies with some of the more outdoorsy subclasses that it can multi-class with. The Totem Barbarian, again, is a great multi-class with the Scout Rogue, being able to rage to resist damage, and get advantage on your initiative rolls is really big for a scout who likes to set up ambushes or get out of dodge real quick if things go sour during a scouting mission. You'll also be able to lock down enemies by getting advantage on your athletics checks and maybe you'll have expertise in that as well. The scout rogue could also multi-class with the twilight cleric and gain some pretty crazy dark vision. You'll be able to support your party with temporary hit points from your channel divinity. If you go a few extra levels you'll be able to gain some flight. <laughs> That's pretty nuts, but the dark vision would be the big one. Uh, if someone has 60 dark vision and they think that that's enough for them to keep an eye on things at night, but you have 300, you don't even have to get close to them to kind of keep an eye on them and scope out what they're doing and set up an ambush. You can give a few of your allies that same dark vision of 300 feet. Make sure your DM understands darkness and that they're going to be using those rules so it's not like every enemy just ignores the fact that they can't see and you'll be able to do really well with this one. This is one of the downfalls of setting up ambushes at night is often you have to get so close that you can't utilize something like a longbow to keep your distance and basically take out your enemies before they can even find you or get close to you. And so being able to stay 300 feet away and use a longbow is pretty remarkable. Keep in mind the range to not get disadvantaged because you want to get sneak attack while you are unseen. This actually might be good to take the skulker feet for once. Next subclass is the soul knife rogue. I think this would go well with the genie warlock. Take six levels of it so you could gain flight and your little genie bottle or whatever you want to rest in. And your psi blades that you manifest could be seen as a genie's energy being able to create things. So maybe it's less about you being psionic and more about you having the luck and wish power, uh, though limited, of a genie. 
Psy Bolstered Knack could be your genie luck and ability to warp reality to some extent. If you go 14 levels of Soul Knife with 6 levels of Twilight Cleric, you'll be able to fly without concentration and be invisible without concentration, as well as just creating an area of dim light that supports your allies. You could be this invisible support or this invisible infiltrator, and I know it's like taking a lot of levels just to do like two things without concentration. But that's pretty huge to not be relying on like an invisibility spell or something so you can actually do things while you are invisible and flying. The swashbuckler rogue is next. Many people's favorite rogue. I think it's great. It's not my favorite, but there are some cool multi-classing combinations that I came up with. One is for the totem barbarian. I've made a video where I talk about how I love to think of a barbarian that uses a rapier, that uses defensive duelist as a feat, and is more finesse based. It can use the finesse to do defensive duelist to react and block damage potentially, but also use its strength to attack. The swashbuckler with fancy footwork, sneak attack, and its dueling abilities will make it so you can get sneak attack pretty consistently for up to, if, if, if we do swashbuckler five levels like I've got in my multi-class article, you get 3d6 extra damage of sneak attack. And then 15 levels of totem barbarian, if you get that high, you'll be critting really hard and the sneak attack damage will be even better with that. You can be naked or nearly naked swashbuckling barbarian who can mobilize around the combat field very easily while kiting and baiting enemies into following after you. Cutting action will make your mobility even better, so you'll be raging and running around like some kind of Tasmanian devil. The last rogue subclass I want to talk about is the Thief, one of my favorite rogue subclasses because it's so unique in its fast hands ability. I believe the Thief would go well with three levels of Gloomstalker so that it can be invisible in the darkness, so if you're infiltrating a place and they're not using torches, you can steal from them just without being seen. You're not technically invisible, they just can't see you if they're relying on darkness to see you. You also get some cool ranger spells like Long Strider, Fog Cloud, Alarm, uh, and a few others that you could use to enhance your thieving abilities and kind of cover your back while you're knee deep in people's loot. And don't forget stealing from enemies what's actually on them, like an arcane focus to disable their spell casting or their expensive material components that are gonna make them do scary spells on your party. Being effortlessly invisible is pretty great. Speaking of stealing from people, the thief goes well with the glamour bard. You can entrance people with your enthralling performance and command people to basically bow down as you quickly snatch something from them without them being the wiser. You also gain bard spells, jack of all trades again. Like Again, the subclass gives you some cool utility, but having three levels in a spellcasting class is also fantastic. I'd also like to see a thief that has three levels of Circle of the Moon Druid, so you can infiltrate places by turning into a mosquito or some sort of small monkey. Something that you can either infiltrate with or infiltrate being smaller and still be able to pickpocket and all those sorts of things. You can also gain a few druid spells like locate objects so you can find the object that you're looking for and pass without trace so that you'll be a very stealthy little monkey. And then there's the battle master fighter combined with the thief. You can use your disarming attack maneuver to force an enemy to drop something they're holding. And then with your fast hands bonus action, you pick that up right off the ground, no problem. You'll also have action surge. So I hope this opened up your mind to a little bit of thinking outside the box with some rogues, as well as looking for some utility. So learning cantrips like Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade are very helpful to boost your damage. Anything that can add to your stealth, whether it be a skill, a feature, or a spell, is perfect for you. You also have versatility between being a ranged or melee attacker. And I know some people say like, a rogue should be a harasser, you know, a striker that gets in and gets out. Sure, but sometimes you just end up being in the thick of battle, so having a bit more defensive ability from multi-classing with skin like a cleric is very nice. So what multi-classing combinations do you enjoy for rogues? Let me know in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe as I will keep putting out videos like this where we can discuss subclasses and multi-classes, and we have lots of other articles and videos for you to observe. If you subscribe, you'll be attuned to us, and you'll be able to scry on us anytime you want, even when you didn't see it coming. We'll just pop up there in your subscription box. Opal also makes videos on this channel, so check out her stuff. She tends to go deeper on a lot of lore, and it's very interesting and helpful for DMs, or just cool to know for players who want to be DMs one day. Between the two of us, I think we'll find some great content for you to enjoy. That's all I have for today, so I'll see you in the next video. Have a good adventure this weekend, and I'll see you later. Bye.